pentacle or pentagram represent the four elements of earth, air, water, and fire, corresponding respectively to the physical plane uh, aspects of inherent qualities and characteristics with earth, intellect with air, emotion with water, and will with fire. And then they're ruled over ultimately by the spirit or the quintessence or the fifth element, which represents spirit. And in its proper position, this point would be placed upward over the other four that it ultimately governs them and is acting as a balance point between them through which we really need to identify and find balance so that we're not lost and owned by the material world senses. Now, most of the time, dark occultists will take this symbolism and reverse it. It's another thing I want to say about dark occultism in general, is they don't create much on their own. They take what's already there and they pervert and they corrupt. They use things that are there and just change them energetically. They don't really have much of a creative essence to do new things. They just use what somebody else has already used to represent one thing and then they reverse it. So you'll see this used in control institutions and in dark occult orders. The pentagonal symbolism reversed. Here you see it in the Victoria Police's logo. Uh, they're not upholding your rights, folks. They're upholding the divine right to rule of the crown. You know, that's, uh, that's why the crown sits atop the inverted pentagram. The spiritual point is thrust downward into the ground. Of course, you have the pentagonal symbolism at the, the pentagram building, the center of intelligence in the United States, and that exactly correlates to the middle of an inverted pentagram. Now, when it comes to inverted pentagonal symbolism or pentagram symbolism, uh, one of the best examples is the street system of Washington, D.C., just above the White House. And again, people will debate this and insist there's nothing to this and because of a specific reason, which I'll get to in a moment. But this is the White House from a Google Maps image from seen from overhead. And you are, uh, I believe, looking due, due north is in that in the upper direction. So, directly above in the northern direction, which masonically is considered a place of darkness, uh, pointing down toward the White House is an inverted pentagram embedded in the street system. Now, people will say well, that's not even a complete reverse pentagram. One of the biggest types of pentagrams in dark occult symbolism is known as the Faustian pentagram, particularly used in Satanism and other forms of dark occultism. A Faustian pentagram deliberately leaves one arm absent or broken. And what that symbol represents is a pact with the evil or chaotic force in the world. It represents a pact with the force of entropy and darkness that power will be delivered unto you and into your hands if you agree essentially to give your life essence or soul over to that force. Hence, the Faustian pentagram is also often referred to as the pentagram of pacts. Like I said, blood symbolism is another big thing, especially when it comes to banking and oil. You'll see this. You just look for it, you'll see it. And again, the symbolic correlations are to life, the life force, vitality, flow, movement, and fluidity. Well, what are oil and banks all about? Flow, right? Flow of energy, flow of commerce. Well, what are they really telling you? Are you going to a blood bank for your life force energy? That money is your life force? You can't live without it, just like you couldn't live without your blood? 
Is, isn't that the deep-seated psych psychological correlation that they're trying to portray by putting a blood drop and associating with it, it with a bank? And, you know, it's, it doesn't even look like a C, you know? That, that's, that's the C from Commerce Bank, but it's a blood drop. Let me just say it just openly right out in, in, in a way that is completely unambiguous. If you believe there's no real difference between these things and that they do not exist in nature, you are accepting Satanism. It's a satanic belief system that comes directly from dark occultism. And once again, you could say whatever you want about believing that or not, I was a priest within this religion. Well, I'm telling you, I was a priest in Satanism. And I'm telling you, the concept of moral relativism is satanic belief. It is satanic ideology. It's one of their, it's their second tenet. They have four pillars. The four pillars of Satanism are self-preservation is the highest aspiration and nothing comes above it. The second tenet is there is no such thing as the, the objective difference between right and wrong. Right is what's good for me, wrong is what's bad for me, personally. And that's it. And I get, to, I get to make that up based on my likes, preferences, and whims. Okay? The third tenet is social Darwinism, which is an extension of macrobiological Darwinian theory. Okay? Social Darwinism, an oligarchy or a ruling class gets to direct the herd because we know better. And it's just our right to do so because our intellect makes us superior. And the fourth pillar is eugenics. Since we are ultimately God, since we decide what's real and what's not real, and we give that perception to the rest of the herd, and we get to decide what's right and wrong, well, we're God here. And therefore, we get to decide who lives and who dies. You, that's the four pillars of Satanism. And you know how many people believe that nonsense? A whole lot. Way more than people in the priest class of this religion, because they are propagating these tenets everywhere in human society. So many people are Satanists and do not even know that they are Satanists. It is a secret, infectious ideology. And you know what? You know how many people are in that mindset? Hundreds of millions, if not billions, and don't even understand what it is. Because they think Satanism is something that it is not. They don't understand what the ideology of Satanism is. They, under, they think you have to be associated with the trappings of Satanism, okay? That you have to dress like, the, as if there's such a thing as dressing like a Satanist. Or you have to have certain things on your walls in your house or in your garage if you're a Satanist. Well, let me tell you something, Satanists are the owners of banks. They own hospitals. They own schools. But uh, these things are real and Jadu, whatever you want to call it, it's real. In the last few years, it's become much clearer to me how much this is actually a force working in the world. And, and it makes much more sense to me now why there are so many hadiths and so many protective du'as against this stuff. You know, this is evil. And also, you know, the, these, the, the influences of the demons. The Prophet said, or that they should become present. You know, so the demonic realm is real. And there are people, unfortunately, that are actively involved in attempting to bring that realm into this realm. And this is where it gets very strange.